Hey guys, last week we talked about why we need discernment and what it is actually. Well, this week we're going to give a little bit more in depth on how to discern and that's coming up next. We talk about the church, family, theology, and even entertainment. In fact, if it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. All right, welcome to the Mike Charleston Show. I am Mike Charleston, and today we are jo- we have a full cast again. Yeah. We have Chuck over here. Hey, guys. And Larry's on the left over here. Hey. And my wife, Sarah. Hello. All right. We are, so we are, we, this is the Mike Charleston Show, and the, the one thing that we like to do on the Mike Charleston Show is we like to talk about family. We like to equip, help to yep. uh, equip believers for things like church and family and marriage and things like that. Well, today we're talking about discernment. And that's a very important uh, topic because if you look in Scripture, it talks about false teachers and yeah, false a things a, a lot. And so last week we talked about the what and the why, right? The or, yeah, the what and the why. What is discernment and why? So if you haven't watched that one yet, you might want to go back that one, pause this one, uh, unless you're watching live. Uh, but then the uh, so this week we're talking about how to. So kind of the answer. We don't, yeah. don't want to be so negative. And uh, so how to discern. That's what, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. A, qu- a quick thing I noticed on the comments of the jo- the short Joshua put okay. out. Okay. Yeah. One of the comments was uh, to, uh, was it the and false teachers false wear, teachers look uh, wear uh, headphones and talk into microphones. Yeah, you like that one. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. Was, I don't know who said it, but yeah, that's pretty funny. Larry. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. So, you know, the, the scripture is full of telling us that we're to discern, that we're to, to judge, and we're to, um, to see what's good and evil. And, yeah. and and there was a quote from Spurgeon that we didn't put on the show, but I guess it's on the show now, uh, that you liked. And what was it? That you don't remember it. I don't remember. He said discernment. He said dis- it's, it's something like this: discernment isn't to determine the difference between good and, and bad. You know, good and evil. It's to determine good from almost good. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, that's okay. good. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. likes that one, but me. See, I liked that, but he was like, "Oh no." Yeah. Uh, why, why did you? Well, like because that? I think it is to determine between good and bad. What well, is that too? Yes. Well, yeah, but the something that appears to be good but may not be good. Uh, that's true. I yes. mean, I get it, and, I, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I lose. <laughs> so I, I lose. So anyway, uh, so w- w- I noticed how Sarah kind of organizes some of the notes and. Uh, She's got a lot of spots in here. I see a lot of her in this, so that's good. A lot of scriptures here. So okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start off right away with First John four one. It says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world." Okay, so I don't know about you guys. I was raised in a charismatic church, and we're we're free in the spirit, ooh, ooh, you know. And uh, <laughs> we we like to hear from the Lord, and it's like if anybody ever challenges you. On something, they say you're quenching the spirit. Yeah, you know, yeah. don't quench the spirit. And actually, that verse, which is in, we don't have it today, I don't think. But if you look at what's quenching the spirit, is actually the false doctrines. That's quenching yeah. the spirit. And so here it tells us to try the spirits whether they are good, and that is what we're talking about on, on why discern. So this is kind of like a, a recap, a little bit for for why we need this. Uh, why don't we go ahead with Second uh, Timothy three one through five? This is a long one, people, so stay with us. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Yeah, so this was a scary one. I mean, they have a form of godliness. So this is why we need discernment, kind of like what we're saying with Spurgeon, right? Yeah, exactly. Between the good and the almost good. So, Just for full disclosure... Some of the, no, oh, on okay. that verse, some of it was cut out just for time's sake. Uh, okay, so okay. in wow. case people are saying, in case somebody says, hey, that's not what it says. There's a dot, dot, dot. There's more to it. Yeah. 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 But go just ahead and read it at home. And, yeah, uh, exactly. But, but yeah, having a form. <clears throat> having a form yeah. of godliness, and that is the thing, where, but denying the power from such turn away. So this is why discernment is important, right? Yeah. Well, that you would, think about that, it's people that look godly. They, yes. And when it, I would say it goes for the full spectrum from, like you said, the charismatic, even the Baptists, they have a form of godliness. They, their form. Right. Sometimes it may come in the form of always wearing suits and tie, following the law, and all this. Sure. Or it could come in as a word of knowledge or something. But it looks godly. It sounds godly. Right. Sounds spiritual, but it's not. It's false. So. so yeah, and so discernment starts with the fear of the Lord. Yeah. It does. Proverbs. 
Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So we need knowledge, and we need to, for, for discernment, you need knowledge, right? And so, and fear. And so we know that all truth comes from God. Okay, once we understand that, we have truth that comes from God, then the rest can fall in place a little bit. So, uh, just a quick comment because oh, we kind yeah. of overskipped First Timothy. We, I kind oh, of we overskipped it. Well, I'm not overskipped it. <laughs> kind of brushed over. Go back. Go back. Yeah, let's go back because there's a lot in there. Because um, he says in the last days. I think we are in the last days. Okay. Sure and, feels that way. Yeah, yeah, it does. And some of that perilous times is... And, and then that verse, what's not mentioned here is that they'll be disobedient to parents. Oh. That's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you look around today... Did we cut that out? Yeah, yeah but I mean, oh, okay. it, just because... It's a long list. It's a long, <laughs> okay. There's a long list. Mm -hmm. And part of that is disobedient to parents, but also this whole thing about lover of, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Right. People seek that all the time. What yep. makes me feel good... And that's one of those things that it's even in the church, we, we often hear, especially like in marriage, it's, well, my spouse doesn't make me feel good. And it's not, mm. that's not my true soulmate. I, and God would want me to be happy. So I need to go f be with this person who is my true soulmate. No way. And, yeah. Right. <laughs> so those are things in the last days that are going to come. And we need to have discernment to see that. And Absolutely. So anyway, that's. Uh, it actually, you know, it actually says that uh, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Yeah. Um, and I think that is uh, the focus, especially as Americans today. It's all about us. Right. It's like the world revolves around each individual and nobody else matters. Right. Uh, that's completely contrary to scripture. I mean, everybody matters and should matter more than us ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a time period where everything seems backwards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Uh, actually, yeah. Especially nowadays, you men are women and women are men, and yeah. Speaking, can't tell of, the difference speaking anyway. of which, I think we sh we're sitting in the wrong order here because Sarah doesn't have any facial hair. I have barely a little bit, and you have a little bit more, and you have a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, anyway. <laughs> I tripped mine yesterday oh, after yeah. the vacation, so <laughs> oh, it's a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so discernment starts with the fear of the Lord, but discernment is a skill that has to be developed. It takes a little bit of time. You don't just get discernment. It's not no, like yeah. we can just pray for you, and then all of a sudden, bam, you get discernment. Right, yeah, it does take something to develop, and that's what we're going to teach you today is how to discern and not just depend on others for this discernment. And so, because a lot of people maybe last week were saying, okay, that sounds good. We need it. What does it look like? How do yeah. I do it? How do I get better at it? How, is there a way to get better yeah. at it? Actually, there is. So we're, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, Hebrews 5, 13 through 14. It says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Yes. Yeah, so this is something that you grow into. We no longer want milk, we want meat. Let's move on to the next one in Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. It's like our life verse here, so whatever. It says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Okay, I want to camp out here for just a second. And and we, we pointed out this verse for a particular reason. And that is because once you once you get saved and you start going down this road of discerning, you, you yeah. start seeing things and you start seeing... Uh, Problems in the church, false yep. doctrines, uh, how people live their lives and all that. Mm -hmm. The problem is you tend to retreat and you tend yeah. to become us four and no more yeah. because us. no one is just like me. No one has the, my pure doctrine and no one it lives like me and I'm the best. You know, that's, that's kind of what people uh, get to in that place. But the, the Bible doesn't tell us that. And in fact, it says when you see that day approaching more and more, we need to get together more. Right. And to, for the very <clears throat> fact of encouraging and provoking to love and to good works. So if, if I don't engage into the body of Christ, then everyone else is going to be open to false teaching and false doctrine. So uh, the people who know what they're doing, they need to help. Right. You know, they yeah. need to help out and lift up. Now, there's time to discern whether you, how much you pull back. And we were back when we were younger and we had our kids with us in, in fellowship. Uh, it was a free for all, uh, you know, when we weren't actually meeting and the kids were outside and we were always right there with our kids to hear what they were talking, who they were talking to and what they were playing with. And, and we were always right there. 
Um, and if it ever got out of hand, we would pull them out. And so there is you just because people aren't always like you are, you can still be around them, right? You know, yeah. you can still yeah. fellowship. Yeah, and that's a that's one of the things I wanted to let's not get scared. Yeah, you know the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but we don't need to be afraid of of false doctrine. The truth is still the truth, and just because Larry might say something that's false, which might happen often, I don't know. But no. <laughs> but the I don't have to be afraid of it. I just I need to correct that, right? Or I well, need to exhort. Yeah, and if you have the truth, you don't need to be afraid of a, an but, error. I think the people sometimes will look at the idea of exhorting as actually being a point of contention. Right, exactly. And withdraw because they don't want to be someone who's creating contention of the problem. Right. Yeah. I, I've, I've done that in the past in my life. Sure. I, and in my lifetime, it's like, okay, we'll just, it's, it's better for us not to participate in this because it's just going to cross create a problem. Well, and that's that the, in and of itself creates a problem. <laughs> right. And, and I get that because no one wants to be the bad guy. Right. But you don't have to do it in a bad guy way. You, you know, you don't have to be a jerk about it. You can... Uh, you can do it in love, and actually, we're, we're getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here. But the um, uh, I don't know where we had this note on here. I know we moved it around at the last second. Never move your notes around yeah. at the last second. <laughs> uh, but I noticed, so years ago, I started, uh, we did house church 20-some years ago, and I went to Bible college, and I'm not wearing that as a badge. That was actually a detriment. And yeah. uh, the you know we study homiletics, how to preach. And the one big thing is when I was preaching, I was youth group and, and stuff like that, no one ever challenged you. Every once in a while, someone would come up and say, what about this? Yeah. You know, but everyone else would usually want to shake your hand, or that was a great message, Pastor Mike, you know, or that was a great <laughs> message, and you're, you're awesome, and they just pat you on the back. When I started doing house church, anytime you taught, oh my word, it was, everyone was like, well, what about this? What about this? And I'm like, can you guys just chill out? But actually, that is exactly what we're hoping for. Yeah. That is, that's the whole point. The body of Christ is to, to, to search these things out. Is this really true? Are you, what you're saying is completely accurate? And we don't have to be, you know, punks about it and, and like constantly, but it is good for us to, yeah, to keep us honest. Yeah. yeah. And to make sure that we didn't misspeak, and I mean, especially I think as a young man. It, you know, verse the verse before in Hebrews 5 says that um, the way that you actually um, be, become better at discerning good and evil is by reason of use. Right. You're actually mm-hmm. doing it. So, I mean, yeah. as you're doing it within a church body and you're challenging one another, right. that, that part of it. Yeah. So let's go to First John 4.4. 4. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah, so just right above that, he was talking about the spirit of Antichrist. Right. And, and so this is like the point where uh, we, should, we should discern from the standpoint of victory and confidence, not from the standpoint of fear, anxiety, and criticism. Right. And that's what we were just talking about. We don't have to be afraid of these things. We have the truth. The truth is in the scriptures here. Yeah. Now, maybe we don't have the whole truth. You know, we're still learning. You know, no one has the complete truth here. But the scriptures are true. And we can always go back to the scriptures. And we can always, if there's ever an issue, we go back to the scriptures. Well, and but, it says that the Spirit will lead us into all truth. And not right. only that, but it says that He's given us everything we need for life and godliness. So there is no place for fear because we have all that we need. Right. If we have questions, we got answers. Right. Right? Yeah. We, we just have to be patient. And maybe it takes us a little longer to get there. But yep. God is good, and He'll take care of us, and there's no reason to be afraid of false doctrine. We can confront it in a, in a, in a godly way. But uh, So anyway, so that that's the intro. Uh, that's, okay, yeah, so yeah, now we can get talking yep. about how to discern. How do, how do we discern? So the, the, here's, a, here's the, the, big, the big one. Number one on uh, how to discern is don't depend on others to tell you the truth. And right. I don't know how, how much I can say that, how important that is. The So many people depend on someone else to tell them the truth. Well, that's defeating the purpose. You, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're going to open yourself up for deception just by trusting someone else because no one has the full truth unless yeah. Jesus, you know, yeah. Jesus. So don't just depend on, the, on, on leadership. Nah, oh, that's what that's where the story was. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. And I Thank also you. put on there that includes you know Bible college and seminary. Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah, looking up some of these different things, I went to many websites and was looking up how to discern, see how other people did, and a number of them said 
trust your professors or trust pastors. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Just Why? because they went to Bible college? Yeah, well, of and, course. And, it's like going to the doctor. They know everything. But, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and there, is a, a, there is a place where elders are in a position where you can trust them a little bit more. They've been well, through yeah. the battles, and they, they right. understand a little bit more. Well, and uh, if they're a teacher, like in Ephesians, where one of the gifts given to the church were teachers, if you have a question, maybe go to them, but that's not your final authority. It should no, you be. Get, you, hear, right. you hear their take, you, right. get, their, you get their Yeah, opinion. you get their take on their, it. It's not just their opinion, but right. their knowledge from them, right. and take that back and continue to search. Yeah. Right, right. It's, it's good to do that. And, and I'm sure most leaders wouldn't just want you to take their word for it. Go search it out for yourself. Yeah. When you search it out yourself, it becomes part of you. You own it now. You right, believe but, it for, yeah. for what it is. And I think that's where, um, especially as Americans, we're just very lazy. And it's very easy if some issue comes up and I don't know, I just go look at what certain people say that I trust. It's comfortable. And it, it so I'm comfortable. like, instead of me going and searching for myself and seeking God for truth, I'm just like, oh, let me see what so-and-so says. <laughs> right. And, and there is a place for that. And then we're going to get to that in well, just a second. Well, you can take what yeah. they say and compare it to what you read. In right. the Bible. Sure. And there's some things in the Bible that aren't clear, and going to a teacher or somebody may give you some insight. There's a reason right. why he gave us teachers. Right, yes. exactly. Yeah. They're, they're, so, I'm not that's... denigrating teachers or ministers out there, but don't just trust their words. Right. They got to be uh, accountable too. Yeah. And they don't have all the knowledge, <laughs> uh, especially nowadays, because here, here's the big difference. The A lot of pastors and preachers will go up in the pulpit and preach. Uh, topical messages or systematic theology, they don't preach verse by verse and just go through the scriptures, which Paul teaches to give attention to reading, exhortation, okay. and doctrine. And and a lot of preachers are just preaching nice little things that aren't really challengeable, you know, and they don't get the whole counsel of God because they're just focused on a number of verses. Or it uh, could be a uh, sermon that they got offline. They, they bought. <laughs> That's right. So, okay, go to First Peter 3.15. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yeah, so you've got to believe this for your, uh, yourself and mm-hmm. understand it. You don't trust another person. Don't trust what we say. Don't trust a, a pastor or uh, a guy who writes books or a theologian. You know, uh, they're going to give you their thoughts and it may hold a lot of weight. There's a, there's a few people that I really like to listen to. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I like a lot of what they say, but I go and search them out, and I think that verse, yeah, uh, no, that verse is, is coming up. Okay, yeah, number point number two. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> I was tempted to move ahead as well, but okay. I was like, ah, not yet. So discernment ministries are nice helps, but don't depend on them. Figure right. it out yourself. Yeah. What I mean by discernment ministries, those people who always like to point out errors and what's wrong. And here's the problem with that: it's kind of like that age-old uh, picture of the bank teller. Oh, yeah. You guys know the story? Yeah. Yeah. With the mm-hmm. counterfeit? The counterfeit. Yeah. yeah, someone tell the story, because I feel like I'm just well, talking. So, whatever someone's being trained how to identify counterfeit counterfeit money, right. they're never shown counterfeit money. They're right. only shown real the real money. thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, when they are so good at being able to identify what real money looks like, when a counterfeit shows up, it's obvious. Right. Because yeah. they, they know the real thing so well. Right. In the same way, if we know the scriptures so we don't have to worry about all the false doctrines, I'm not saying we're ignorant of the false do- right. false doctrines. But um, but if we know the real thing, we're going to recognize falsehoods real quickly. Yeah. That reminds me of a story, Jonathan, uh, when we were when he lived in Florida, and we did too, but uh, there was a guy, he owned a pawn, uh, pawn shop. Okay. And Jonathan worked with him and stuff. Well, he Jonathan went in there one day, and, he, and, and the guy, Frank, said, hey, I bought this silver from this guy at a really good deal. What do you think? And Jonathan looked at it. He goes, Frank, that's fake. Mm. He's like, what do you mean it's fake? He goes, you're telling me I have, I've been doing this longer than you've been alive, and you're going to tell me that I bought some fake silver? He goes, Frank, I'm telling you it's fake. Mm-hmm. I can tell by listening to it when you when you drop sure. it on the counter. Sure, sure enough, it was fake. Yeah. <laughs> because, and it was one of those examples where he knew the real thing. He even knew what it sounded like right. or what it should yeah. sound like. And he was able to spot the fake. And so if you spend enough time with the scriptures, right. you may not have the perfect doctrine at all times, right. but you're going to know right. way more than if, if you don't study it. I mean, yeah. that is, that's going to be one of the next points here. But uh, let's go to Acts 20, 27 through 29. 
For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So we talked about this last week, yeah. and you know, there's going to be grievous wolves coming in, even amongst themselves. And this is his like declaration as he's on his way out, and he's talking about he's talking to the Ephesian elders here. But what's important here is that Paul says at the beginning, "For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel That's of like, God." Yeah. That is a good way not to get deceived. If you know the whole counsel of God. So if your church is not studying the scriptures, having a Bible study where they go verse by verse, right. and they're not going through, they're just preaching either systematic th- theology, something like just Calvinism. They're just yeah. preaching something that is a systematic. I have a systematic theology book from uh, Charles Finney. Now, I've read some of it, and I like Charles Finney, but that's a systematic. Right. Th- that's- so the problem with systematic theology is that Everything that you read is going to filter through that system, yeah. and not yes. the scriptures itself. Now, I know they use scriptures. I'm not. I'm not trying to denigrate people who are in those systems, but but the problem is, it's the the whole counsel of God. Don't get fixated on certain verses. You know, you don't want to have a one one verse theology. It's the whole counsel. And Paul thought it was worthy enough to he he did not he did not shun to declare unto them the, all the counsel, the whole counsel of God. Right. The other thing, too, is let the Bible define its terms. Yeah. Yes. That, let it be That's its good. dictionary. Because you might go through go to a commentator or, or systematic theology book, like you said, and they may interpret a, or define a term one way because they got it from a Greek lexicon, but the Bible actually may define it a different. Right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. That's a how to study the Bible. Well, like an a, example, we were talking to somebody. I think not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, about uh, there's different baptisms in the Bible. But right. if you just interpret it as water baptism, you're going to get confused you on a lot be, of verses. Might so, be. Yeah. Right. It's important. It's so, important to know how to study. Now there there is some helps out there, yeah. and there's other things out there. But be very careful that some people they they. They're, they're, their helps are to keep you in a systematic theology right. thing. So number two, what do we have for number two? Search the scriptures. Not yes. just search, yeah. but study. Study. So you you yeah, it's not just um um yeah, it's just a, not to just search, but to study it. That's right. So searching the scriptures, why we had search the scriptures because of the next verse, right? right. right. Acts seventeen eleven, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Now, I like these guys because Paul is out there, and I think Paul likes them, you know, like, Mm -hmm. hey. And the scriptures he's referring to, by the way, is the Old Testament, Andy Stanley. And (laughs) so he is, you know, he's he's preaching and and sharing, and they are searching to see if these things are true. That is a... That is a discerning people, you know, like, hey, is what he's saying accurate? And hey... That's right. That's right. You know, and, well, and, and they also said search the scriptures, not a Greek lexicon or right. a Greek manuscript. Right. You have but, to have you know, a high yeah. view of the Bible. Yeah. If, if you don't have a high view of the Bible, you're probably not watching right now, right. Exactly. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have a very high view of the Bible. We want to go back to the Bible and make sure that everything that we do for all of our life and all of our doctrines are based in the scriptures, okay. not just history, the church history, right. and, and not just because, you know, Calvin said it or Finney said it or... Or Luther said it, or you know, all these other guys that are great guys. Probably, I, I don't know them, but whatever. Uh, okay, so why don't we go there? Hebrew, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Hebrews yeah. four twelve. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There it is. It's a discerner. So the word of God is a discerner of yep. the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it divides pretty pretty tightly. We have any other listeners out there, Joshua? Anybody watching? Any comments? Nothing yet. Oh, we got a couple comments. Like what? Oh. Okay, I can't read it. That's <laughs> too far away. Yeah, he doesn't want to say anything. Okay, uh, so going back here, maybe at halftime we'll go through and look. But Second uh, Timothy two fifteen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so this one right here is where study, right? Right. Study. Yeah, study. Study to show yourself approved, a workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. That's so this very is, important. Yeah, searching the yeah. scriptures would indicate that you know the scriptures and you have to like that's what I like about the Bible be so much that our kids do. It's it's are they learning doctrine? No. They're not yeah. learning doctrine at all really. They're learning scriptures and they're memorizing scriptures. They're getting in their heart and they're mem they're, they're memorizing big 
chunks of it. Yeah. And so they're getting in their heart. And so they're young. Yeah. And as they're growing, they're like, well, that doesn't sound right, you know, because they know the Bible. They have the Bible in them. And as they can start to get their thoughts organized and, and explain God to other people, you know, it, they can understand where falsehoods can come in. Right. Well, I like that it says study. This doesn't just read your Bible. You know, right. many people yeah. have their little devotional or their which whatever fine. they read every day, which is fine, but it's more than just reading. It's we not a casual reading. Right. It yeah. is important to study. And study implies active learning. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. also, it's interesting, you said rightly dividing, which means there are divisions. Yeah. Because how would you be able to, why would he say... You have to divide it correctly, right? From good, from and good, good from almost good. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, Chuck. What do we got here? Discernment comes with what? Comes with knowing God. So knowledge. Yeah. I know a lot of people like to poo-poo knowledge these days, and like it's just all about the spirit. And knowledge just puffs up, and it can. And there's no doubt it can. And right. you don't you don't get this from a Bible college. But what's good ways to know God? Well, before the, I put on there, knowing God also it comes from knowing the Bible. Because sure. if you don't know the Bible, you're not going to know God. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. If you want to know who God is, you have to read the Word to understand His character. Right, exactly. What He's like. What absolutely. He, what He's done. What so you know what He's going to do. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's really our only way that's, to get to know it. Him. I mean, yeah. everything else is based on our feelings, yeah. and I don't yeah. trust my feelings on who God is. Feelings. Yes. Nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, feel, uh, feelings. Uh, Philippians <laughs> one nine through ten. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may, that ye may approve things that are excellent. So the knowledge and the judgment are connected and that you might approve all things, uh, approve things that are excellent. So that's part of the discerning process is to know. Mm-hmm. You have to know what you're talking about. And, right. and that takes time. It doesn't just happen. Once again, if you're a new believer... This is going to take time, and that's why you have elders, and that's why you have other uh, brothers in the Lord to kind of help you out with this process. But you have to—it just takes time to get to know your Savior. It it doesn't mean that you're not saved. (laughs) You know, you're just as saved as anybody if you're a believer. But there's just— certain levels, and that's usually just experience. Right. It's, yeah, that's, that's all it is. You know the best way to get experience? Is to live it. <laughs> yeah. Experience. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> well, I mean, the knowledge is really important when you talk about judgment. You know, I think about a judge trying to make a judgment in a courtroom. Oh, yeah. And if they don't know the story from both sides or whatever, they don't have the knowledge, then the judgment would be pretty oh, fruitless. Oh, so we yeah. jump to the verse? We, we, we had that oh. verse. Uh, in Proverbs eighteen thirteen, oh yeah, where it talks oh. about hearing a matter before uh, you got to hear both sides. Yeah, you know. And I, I was looking it up in the CEV. Uh, yeah, forgive Just me. Just for some comedy. Yeah, for yeah. comedy. Well, <laughs> and I actually, it was kind of funny because I forget how it says in the King James. We didn't write it here, but in the in the CEV, it says it's stupid and embarrassing to give an answer before you listen. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. It is stupid and embarrassing <laughs> if you if you answer. And a lot of people do that. They don't hear both sides. They hear oh. just one side, and they quickly make their judgments. And that's what you were saying. You have to know, and so it's good to know the the uh, know God. Yeah. And yeah. so when you hear something that doesn't quite fit, you you know my way to, right away. You've heard both sides, yeah. and you can quickly make those judgments. So well, and also in Philippians here, your love is going to increase the more you know. Should yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, wow, so is that like the test? So if we don't have a lot of love, yeah. maybe we don't, don't have a anything. lot of knowledge. <laughs> well, it's kind of like when you know your wife more. Uh, hopefully you love her more. Right. Yeah. 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 I was wondering where you're going with that. I, mean, I do, but maybe some people out there are like, oh, you know. Yeah. But anyway, what's going on? Uh, uh, Colossians. I, I'm sure Pam's thinking that. Man, if I would have known this are you 31 gonna, years ago. Should we give you the shovel again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm talking about myself. You're going uh, to embrace uh, your failures again? I'm still there. <laughs> okay, Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Yeah, well, no, this is just a good verse. Uh, we don't yeah. really, it's just pretty straightforward. Right, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Knowing him more. And that is, we were talking about that at church or Bible study. I forget which one, but it was someone brought that verse up and just knowing him. If anything, what we ever get out of this is knowing him more, you know, is is knowing Christ more and more. Just chase a rabbit for a minute. It, there's a lot of these verses in here is actually coming from Paul, and a lot of them are Paul praying. 
If you want to mm-hmm. look at something sometime that's very interesting and be encouraged yeah. about how to pray, go look at all that Paul prays for. It just oh, yeah. it'll it'll really hit you. It's like man, I don't I don't even come close. Right, right. No, I think we did a, a, a show on that one a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pra- Paul's prayers and, and all that's pretty interesting. It's it's a very good thing to, to study. Uh, we got a little bit more time here, Joshua. I think uh, John eight thirty one through thirty two. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth is important. You know, a lot of people are like, does does discernment really matter? Absolutely. The truth matters. The truth makes a big difference in your life. And and if you're getting tossed to and fro from every doctrine that's out there, uh, you could be in a bad place. So it's it's a very—truth is very important. Okay, I, I guess we can do this real quick. I keep looking at the clock. And oh, yeah. we are. So the discernment test. Let's quickly go through the discernment test. So um, is it in the Bible? That's, uh, a, that's a good yeah, thing to know, right? Good. Is it in the Bible first and foremost? Let's let's make sure. Like sometimes people just come up with stuff that's not in the Bible. And is it in the Bible? Well, a big one like that is, well, actually, no, I guess it'd be point number two. So Does it we... make sense with the whole Bible? Right. Right. Okay. So we got to take the whole Bible as, as a context. So context is big. Yeah. You're going to hear that a lot. Other teachers say context. And it's true. Yeah. Uh, context is big, big deal. Well, the reason why I say that, there's some doctrine, there's some teachings that it's not exactly clear in the Bible, but when you take the whole thing, the whole scriptures, you can make um, a correct assessment. Right. You can take a little part here and there and twist it and make God look a certain way. Well, yeah. Well, like an example of that is I just saw a thing recently. I, I There's a YouTube channel I watch, but anyway. Um, the Mike Charleston show? Well, that yeah. one. And there's another one. Um, I, Red Pen Logic. Anyway, he does short little videos. Anyway, the one, it was an atheist talking about how God is violent. And anyway... But if you just take the Old Testament and you read it and you look and you're like, wow, that is true. Mm-hmm. I mean, because God told the Israelites to go in and wipe out everybody, and in some cases, even the animals. Right. And you're like, that's harsh. Mm. But if you don't look at the whole context and you don't understand why, then you're going to come to the conclusion that, yeah, the God in the Old Testament is a violent bully. Yeah, you, you need but, the whole context. Yeah, so that's where looking at the old, the whole context and discerning what is going on and making a true assessment makes a big difference. And you want to stay away from one verse theology. And yeah, that's it. It's not good. And when we say <laughs> one right. verse theology, there's all these people that have like their pet doctrines yeah. or their pet verses and they always go to and it's like you have a whole wide variety of verses on baptism, but they pick one oh, yeah. one oh, that is like, well, yeah, but what about this one? And it's like, well, but the re- see how the rest of it Acts 2.38. Picture? Right, exactly. <laughs> and so you got to be careful of one verse theology. Uh, you got to take the whole Bible, and that means you have to read the whole Bible. I don't yeah. know how many people just don't read the Old Testament. Yeah. They don't understand yeah. uh, the, whole, the whole Bible because they don't take it in the context. And when I write letters, I, I would want people to read the whole letter and understand it and not like nitpick you oh, know, right, here and there yeah. and be like, well, he said this. And You know, it's funny. Nobody, if you don't do that with other writings, like the writings of Shakespeare. You don't take the things out of one play of Shakespeare <laughs> and put it with another and come with, and like, it just doesn't make any sense. So no. why would you do that with the Bible? Because after all, the Bible is, it's just a collection of books. Right. Combined together, but because we don't have a chapter on marriage, we don't right, have a chapter yeah, on this, yeah. so we do have to get the whole counsel of God. You know, the funny thing about how, I, no, I, I shouldn't bring it up, but like you mentioned marriage, but there's a big thing, you know, about fatherhood. But name somebody in the, in the Bible that was a good example of a good father. Okay, we are chasing rabbits now. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but then again, that's the whole the principle of. A good father, godly father, is there. It's just sometimes you got to look at the bigger picture and go through the right. whole thing. So, and another part of the discernment test here is: does it come from outside sources? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like the first one: is it in the Bible? Mm-hmm. You have outside sources. A lot of people will bring in other other things like infant baptism. Yeah. And a, you know, just a a random one that I can think of. You know, where it's not in the scriptures. It's a good idea. 
once you see how they get there, you're like, I can see how you got there, but you <laughs> forgot about the Bible. Yeah, right. purgatory. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, other things like that. You're just like, well, okay, these are coming from outside. And now your church history, sometimes church history is fine, but a lot of church history oh, yeah. is just people's opinions that they've, they, yeah. they haven't put in practice the scriptures. So anyway, uh, we are way over time for this part, uh, Joshua. So why don't we uh, go ahead and take a break and bring Abigail in here and have our game time. Oh, yeah. Thank you for listening. This is the Mike Charleston Show. We are back, and this is the halftime show. I don't know what we call this anymore, but yeah, it is Abigail's time, and uh, this is our uh, game show time, I guess. All right, Abigail. So, how's your week been? Pretty good. Okay. Yep. 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 So. Uh, I guess Sarah just took off. She's over there. But uh, what just do we have? Good. She stepped out <laughs> so we didn't have a chance to win. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to talk about it yet. But, Moving uh, along. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's uh, good. So, okay, what are we doing here? What is going on? All right, so I'm going to read something. Okay. And you're going to tell me whether or not it's from a verse in the Bible or not. Uh, oh, that's 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 last week. Ooh, okay. yeah, how are we going to do this? <laughs> like, we just one person at a time? You can do that, or you can... I was thinking you'd more collaborate on this. Oh, we could collaborate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So three three minds coming together. The three yep. musketeers. So we should hear a lot of... Yes. 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 Okay, so go ahead. Give us some. Give it to us. It's, okay. good, it's not going to be like, for God so love the world, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, there's some easy ones in okay. here. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll start off with this one. God will never give you more than you can handle okay. on your own. I, uh, yes, I, we, we, so the concept <laughs> is, is in there, Scripture. Yeah. Yes, but it's in in that, 1 Corinthians, he, he, he says that, um, he says something like that, but he but, doesn't actually say that. No. So, um, it's not in the Bible. No, right, it's not in the Bible. No, I'm going to say, no. right. That is correct. Oh, right. Yeah, we, we got that one, right? It is not. But the concept kind of is. Yes, yeah. Kind of, but. Okay. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Oh, mercy. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that's in there. I think in that in the Song of Solomon. I don't know, I don't but know, it but sounds it, like it would I'm, be... I'm trying to figure out if that was a compliment or an insult. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hey, the babe, your hair is like a flock of goats. Uh, how does that make you feel? It's in there. Uh, you think it's in the Bible? I think I'll it's, in. it's in the Bible. Yes. Yes. And yes. it is in Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Yeah. So that's very curly. I hate goats. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, goats really aren't curly. That's sheep. It depends on the breed of goat. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. All right, you shall rise up before the hoary head. Well, um, I think that's in. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Yeah, I think the hoary hen is what's throwing me off. Like I know, no, head, oh, head, right? Head. Oh, head? Yeah, not yeah. chicken. Oh, yeah. Head. Head. Okay, <laughs> the hoary. Yes, then it's in there. That is in there. Okay. All right. <laughs> The hoary hen. Uh, I'm like, not so sure. I've never seen a white chicken before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's called a. It's called a. Um, oh, yeah, I have seen a white chicken. Yeah, we know. Oh, I know. I'm the. Well, yeah. no, they got white chickens. An old, an old yeah. chicken. With no, white. but all those white chickens that oh, lay yeah, white never eggs. Never mind. Yeah. I, I know. I used to raise them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Anyway. Judge not, for only God can judge you. Well, okay, so now, uh, once again, the concept is judge not lest you be judged. Right. So are they just quoting a modern version, but it's... <laughs> is that the CEV? Right, <laughs> CEV, but it's not in the Bible. No, no. I'm going to no. That is it's correct. Not. All right. All right. Uh, this is an easy one. Oh, sweet. Mm. Jesus wept. Oh, that's in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. 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 John 11, 35. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotta give us some hard ones. No. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Uh, the Lord the... reward him according to his works. Yeah, that's in yeah, the Bible. Yeah. That, that's definitely in the Bible. Yeah. That is in the Bible. Yes. Alexander the coppersmith. Is that, was he related to um, Chester Copperpot? <laughs> and, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, wasn't he related to, uh, what's his name? The British are coming? The Who said that? Paul Revere. Uh, Paul Revere, yeah, because he was a coppersmith. Was he? Okay. Okay. 
All right, go ahead. Next one. Time frame is a little different there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. Okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, we, we know that one's not in. No, we're a bunch of slobs. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We've searched. Hey, yeah. I shower once a week for the show. That's cold shower. That's right. I, don't, I, no, shave, yeah, I shave water. for the show, but I shaved yesterday. Uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Yes, that's yes. definitely Song of Solomon. Something, yeah. I know that yep. one. Yep. 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 We're on a roll. It's actually a song that we know, too, that has that in there. So, yeah, it's kind of a weird song when you think about it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do unto others as they have done unto you. Well, okay. Yeah. So, so the concepts. No. <laughs> well, definitely, that's the golden rule. So I'm uh, saying, uh, no. you might want to listen to that again. Yeah, read it again for him. Do unto others as they have done unto you. Oh, okay. Yeah, not in the Bible. No. Right. no. Nope. <laughs> I think it's do unto others before they do unto you. Before. Yes. <laughs> um, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. <laughs> See, the, rest like me. <laughs> <laughs> the concept is good there, but no, that's a song. Yeah. Yes, it the, is. One of the hymns, right? Yeah. All right. You are the man. You are the you man. You are the man. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, well, that. <laughs> you are the man, the actual no, phrase. Thou art the man, he does say, right? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, that was Nathan to David. Right. Yeah. And some versions probably would say, you are the man. Yeah. Now, they're not saying, you're the man. You're the man. You're the man. man. You're the so I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's in the Bible. I am too. I'm sure we can find a translation that says it that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're the man. That's in the Bible. That is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we haven't missed one yet. God helps oh. those who help themselves. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not in there. Not in the Bible. No. I All didn't right. think the concept is no, no. And the last one. Oh, okay. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. Mm. It sounds like it could be in the Bible. It sounds like something Joshua would say. Joshua. No, was that uh, save us two? Okay. We got we to. Gotta, we can't just keep thinking. Hmm. I'm going to say it's there. I think it's in there. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, let's go. It is in there. Yes. Yeah, where's that from? That sounds familiar, but... It was a weird story. I don't remember exactly, but they're two sons, and they ha- both have both of them had a son, and... Two sons had sons, and... No, both- two women okay. had sons. Oh, okay. Yeah, two was sons can't... Was- oh, no. Okay. I don't know. Hey, remember we got that. it right. We got it. Yeah. yeah. That's all First that Kings. Yes, first we, King. we oh, okay. got it right. So, yes, I, we I got it right. the first time. But... I think it was some softballs. Yeah. yeah those, those those are are anyway, well, thank you, Abigail. Now, we Make didn't have any good. emails. If you want to email the show, please email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. That is talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. And in fact, we are now on Instagram, right, Joshua? Oh, wow. I have no idea. Is it the Mike Charleston show? Underscore the Mike Charleston show. Will you put that on the, uh, like, the... Show notes. Yeah, or something, might as well keep adding all those notes on there. But oh, yeah, not? underscore. I don't know what we do with Instagram. You're supposed to take pictures and make comments and stuff. I don't know. Was that Instagram or Snapchat? No, so, I, I don't, don't know. know. But we're on Instagram. He's, he's pulling it up right now. So it's underscore Mike Charleston show. And uh, we put some of the shorts on there. And um, um, as long as it's not gym shorts. So <laughs> the um, anyway, that's an inside joke. Yeah. <laughs> and so, all right. We have, there was, Chuck went on vacation. That's why yeah. he wasn't here last that's week. Right. I did. And it sounds like he didn't move a lot. Not much. No. It okay. was it was a very relaxing vacation, which was wonderful. We had a great time. I had um, um, one of my favorite places, the North Carolina into the mountains, and sure. just uh, just enjoy some rest and relaxation. I had a very uh, a busy um, season during the end of December and early January, and I unfortunately had to work a lot more than I wanted to, and I was able to recoup some of that time and get away and rest, and I think it was really good for all yeah. of us. Yeah, good. yeah, that's nice. Got the visit with my daughter Sharon and, and Kate, some too. Oh man, we went. Uh, the one thing we did do after we went back to their house, we went uh, um, racing go karts. 
And oh. this was not, this wasn't your ordinary go to the fun place. And oh, yeah. get, these things did like 45, 55 miles wow. an hour. Oh, and it was, a, it was a, a complete round track that they had the inside, the, the infield was all concrete. Yeah. And they had, oh, it was, it was fun. That would be a blast. Yeah. yeah. You, you find out pretty quick that, uh, these these race car drivers <laughs> now I know why they call it a sport. It, it, after ten minutes, I was tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're only going like forty five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine going two hundred. Uh, yeah, I don't think so, Tim. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was, was it a dirt track? No, it was. It was, it was a. Uh, it was previously a, a circle track. It was uh, concrete. Okay. And the whole infield was concrete. And what they did is they they made it more like Grand Prix style, where okay, they actually yeah. set up. Um, you could actually do right hand turns. Uh, well, no, it was in and out. They they yeah, created okay. a path in the infield and back on the outside and okay. out of a plastic um, uh, divider. Divider, divider yeah. basically. So some serious hairpin turns, and I mean, you if you went into it and you hit the brakes too hard, you spin out and knock the hit the hit the divider. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Did you do anything fun, Larry? Nothing. All right, well, we got hot water. You got I, hot water. Yes. That, that is, is fun, especially yes. this time of year. Yeah, the yeah. hot water wasn't working in his apartment. But yeah, we've got $40 it. part. That's yep. all it was. Awesome. That's, yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah, it was better than a $500. New unit. Yes, yeah. so $40 part was great. So anything for us, babe? We didn't do anything really this week. We just, oh, wedding stuff. Just wedding stuff. Yes, my daughter's yeah. getting married, so we're just planning for that. Next and, month, um, right? Uh, uh, well, almost. Almost, almost, almost next yeah. month. Yeah, Joshua's birthday's next week, so everyone wish him a happy ah, birthday. Yeah. Yep, it's a couple of days. And, of course, he's going to get his teeth pulled out here pretty soon, too. So, happy birthday. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Getting dentures already? Yeah, welcome no. to 18. <laughs> Yank. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what's going on here. But, uh, anyway. All right, well, let's get back to the show. We don't have much time left on the show, so why don't we get right back to it? Thank you for listening to The Mike Charleston Show. All right, we are back, and uh, I'll keep that in mind. So yeah, we're gonna finish up here on discernment, right? And um, so yeah, we were just talking in the break about a book that t- took Chuck two years to, yeah. to finish. Well, I didn't and read it I, all yeah. this time for two years, but yeah, I'd, I'd read it for that's a while a, yeah. and set it down. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a good one. Book. Yeah, that's a good one. It is. So we yeah. just did the discernment test. There's way more to, to, to do the discernment test. Discernment test. Uh, but so this next part, we're just our final thoughts on discernment. These are kind of random thoughts. There's not necessarily one. This is the third point necessarily, uh, but we didn't know how to categorize these things. So, um, so we're just going to kind of go through some of these things and uh, see where they fit. Maybe they okay. are just their own points. And uh, but I guess so p- point number three: discernment is not just for doctrine, but for life too. Right. So what I yeah. mean for that is, uh, you know, our our worldview helps with that. So where do we get our worldview from Scripture? What right. we were just talking yeah. about before. Right. But when we say like it's not just for doctrine, so doctrine is very important. That that, that does dictate what we believe and how we live. But you have to discern on a lot of different levels of of whether you should hang out with certain people. You know, is this a good group to hang out yeah. with? Is this a good job to stay in? You know, uh, the first job I had when we first got married really wasn't a good influence on me. And I didn't like it, but I didn't know what to do. I was still young and I was influential. No, I wasn't influential. I was uh, easily inf- influenced. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't an influencer. No, they were influencing me, and it wasn't necessarily for the good. And and so when I got out of that, that helped. You know, it was like okay. So you had to dis- you have to discern. Some places are are, are not good for you, and uh, so it's not just for doctrine. It, but some of that helps your worldview, right? Yep. Well, and yeah. this is where it's important as parents. We do a lot of discerning for our children and right. for things that will allow them to do or to watch or to read or whatever. Yes. So. Get a cell phone. <laughs> when is a good time to get yeah. a cell phone? Yeah. Uh, what about dating? You know, just things like video yeah. games. And, and I know we say this, but we were just, I'm just reminded, you know, we go up to Ohio and uh, there's a camp up there that we've been to. And a lot of the uh, ex Amish, uh, you'd be surprised. They're, they're not very worldly minded. Yeah. Right. And so they're open to a lot of deception yeah. because they're, right. they're, everything is new to them. And they're like, well, is this good? And, and so they're not sure. Because the, the thing is, they're they're in a group that's so full of rules that you tend to go the other way. Right? Yeah, yeah. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with certain rules. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's certain rules that you want to in place in your family, 
And so you have to discern, you know, for your own personal family how how this works. And don't right. just take it for granted that, hey, well, everybody celebrates Halloween, so I guess it's okay. Well, well not necessarily, you know. Well, and just because it says Christian doesn't mean it actually is Christian. Right. That's, that's the right. that's what we're talking right. about here. And that's the whole point of this this episode or this show is that the the moniker Christian doesn't always mean Christian, right. you know. So someone can say they're they're a believer. You've got to check them out. And, well, and so in the, in the, I mean, in the world today, both <clears throat> in the secular and, and Christian world, if somebody has a point that they they are trying to make, sure. they they may truly believe something, or if they're just trying to make a point, they'll go search out someone who's an expert on the matter. Yes. And put up the expert as somebody to back their what their belief is or what their point is, when in reality is the expert may just have a bunch of knowledge that is useless. Right, 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 right. You keep using the word. Uh, yeah. I don't think it means what you yeah, think Yeah, expert it means. is, uh, it depends on what you mean by expert, right? Right. Because right. the expert could just be uh, regurgitating what they've heard in college and other people Correct. that don't really know what they're talking about. So church history, it can be important. I know a lot of people were saying on online and on their tests and things like that, that if it's new doctrine, and I would agree, if it's you've never heard this before, you might want to double check it. Yeah. Yeah. But just because it's historical or we've always believed this, you know, we've uh, Augustine taught it. Well, Augustine is wrong half the time. <laughs> yeah, so it's exactly. like, uh, I, you know, I don't want to. Yes, Augustine. I said it, Augustine. <laughs> um, how come Augustine and Constantine get the same, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, you know, there's, an old, there's a story I heard before. This is a uh, more of a ladies thing. It was question was from passed down from generations is that this in this household that you always cut the end off of the ham whenever yep. you went to cook it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And one of the granddaughters farther down the line asked, well, Mom, why do we do that? So I don't know. That's what grandmother did. Well, why did grandmother do it the way? He traced it all the way back. It was because it wouldn't fit in the pot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, well, we've been doing this for <laughs> what? You know, so, okay. So Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So this is where discernment comes in, not just for for um, doctrine, but for daily life. And you have to understand what the will of God is. So walking circumspe- circumspectly and not as fools. That was easy for you to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we have to pay attention. Uh, you know, when you watch the news, I know there's a lot of fake news out there, and it's hard mm-hmm. to believe what what to believe. But if your worldview is is Christianity and your worldview, you can filter through that worldview, and some of that stuff doesn't even really matter. I don't even have to pay attention to the news, right. and I know it's all bad. <laughs> you know, well, there's never all, good news. Also, a lot of the news is not really; it's kind of news, but it's more propaganda than news. Sure. And you got to be able to discern what is what's their agenda, right? What's That's even agenda? in the church. Yep. Yeah, what's exactly. their agenda? What are they? What's their main thrust here? I'm trying to remember the quote we had. This was on. a a show a couple of weeks ago. But I started off with first you have to decide what you believe, and then that will guide you in the rest of what your decisions are, something along that line. But hmm. that once you good. decide, I remember that. yeah, once so. you decide what you believe, then everything filters through that. Oh, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know what episode it was. Someone go tell us. Yeah. Uh, but no, the um, so uh, to that point, you know, confronting false teaching. So how do we do this? You know, is it our place to make it our ambition to just confront all the false teaching out there? Maybe. It depends. Like in, in a fellowship, things are going to get brought up or people you're going to uh, hear that someone has read this book and you're like, ooh, that's a bad yeah. book, <laughs> you know. But here's here's what I've learned. If I, I've heard churches do this. Pastors will get up and say, this book is really bad. Do not read this book. And you know what everybody does? <laughs> they, they go, go read, read the book. Because yeah. <laughs> they want to know why he doesn't want us to read the book. Yeah. So don't do that. Um, For psychology. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> We're not the police necessarily, but we do want to be aware. Um, but if we do confront and we, we come face to face with false teaching, uh, we need to do it in love, kindness, and for a hope of repentance. Yeah. You know, it, right. and we have to be long suffering. Yeah. Paul, I forget what verse we didn't put it in here in this one, but I know I was reading it. He had long suffering in his teaching, and and so he was willing to spend some time with people to correct them. Yeah. It wasn't just like I'm going to rebuke you and cancel you, and you're of no importance. Uh, he actually spent time, understood them. He he expounded the word of God to them, and he expected them to change. I'm guessing, but uh, so he when you confront. 
you want to confront it in love and kindness and with the hope of repentance. You want to challenge them, but it's, it should be in love and kindness. You know, you don't want to just be a jerk. There's right. a lot of people on YouTube that just rail against everyone that is wrong. And once again, just because you're wrong doesn't mean you're a false teacher. You could just be mistaken about right. something. But false teaching really has a intent behind it of leading people astray. Right. All right, so what do we have here, babe? We got Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. That was just another verse talking about speaking the truth in love. Right. Once again, we we, we don't want to just be single verse people here, so right. we That's had right. to. So. Well, the reason why I think he said to speak the truth in love is because oftentimes the truth hurts. It's sure. kind of yes, sharp it sometimes. And, you know, so that old saying when the wife says, does this dress make me look fat? You got to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you got to yeah. speak the truth. <laughs> yes. That's a tough one sometimes. Right. Yeah. Don't don't ask what you don't want to hear. It's got yeah. nothing to do with the dress, babe. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that doesn't go over <laughs> very well. The answer. Yeah. Larry, <laughs> what are you doing? The so Second Timothy 2, 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay, so this was the verse I was thinking, I was th thinking about, and, okay. and we did keep it in. Um, but if you look at the whole chapter, he's, he's talking about... Uh, what a, a servant would be like, a, yeah. a minister. And so he's apt to teach. So you have to know what you're talking about, yeah. you know, in order to teach. And you're gentle to all men and you're patient. Uh, how mm. many people are not patient with mm. people? Like, how many times did you hear the gospel before you received it, right? And you give it to one person, you expect them to know right now everything. Yeah. You know, let yeah. them, let the Holy Spirit work in their lives, being meek, instructing those that oppose th themselves. So, if there's going to be people that oppose, that's fine. That's what I was talking about earlier, that in the institutional style, there was very, very few oppositions because, oh, he's the man of God and he has all the answers. Oh, yeah. And I, I hardly ever got challenged. But in the house church model, I got challenged all the time. <laughs> and and sometimes they opposed me. It wasn't just a challenge. They opposed and I had to be patient. And we would talk through it and we would discuss the scriptures and it was it was fine. Um, and then God, if God prevents you, give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. And that was the kind of the one goal is you hope for repentance. That right. if it's, if it is a bad thing, then you're hoping for repentance, right? Right. Yep. So anyways, okay, well, we're going to skip that one because we already used that one. The Proverbs that. Uh, 18, 13, yeah. it was kind of a random thought. But uh, confront with the word, not opinions. And so here's where we get in trouble it's easier just to spout off opinions. And this is where knowing the word helps. Yep. Yeah. You know, if if someone is saying something that doesn't sound right, like the prosperity gospel or something, the best way to oppose it is the truth with scripture. And now maybe you're taking scripture out of context. I don't know. You know, that's irrelevant at this point. But at least you're starting with the scripture. Right. And if you are just through your opinion, well, I just don't think that's right because I just think Christians should be poor. Well, that's not a good reason. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's like, or, or vice versa, like, I think Christians should be rich, you know, and like, well, based on what, you know, that's your your thoughts, your, your opinion. But what does the word of God say? And not to pick on the prosperity teaching because that's easy to pick on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, confront the word, con confront with the word, and not Proper. just opinions. Right. That that would presuppose that you would know the scriptures. So once again, get mm. into the scriptures, and know, know them. them. How are you going to confront if you don't? I remember when I was uh, in Bible college, I was challenged uh, by Mormons, and they were challenging me on the deity of Christ. And I just and they said, besides John one one, where can you find you know? That's how all Mormons talk, I guess. But they, uh, <laughs> you know, John one one, and I'm like, okay. And I, I sat there and thought, and I just I couldn't think of anything right on right off the top of my head. And I'm in Bible college, yeah. and that shamed me. Yeah. And so I went back home, and I'm searching the scriptures, and I found it. I'm like, aha! Next time I talk to those guys, I'll, I'll know. And I probably never talk to them again. But the next guys, you know, I'm I'm prepared. Right. So it's 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 not a bad thing not to have uh, to not have answers. Right. But it's a bad thing to stay in that state and not even try. Like, well, that it's not that you need to know every answer, but to know that you have the resource to find the answer. Right. Right. And and that you have the ability to find it. That's absolutely goes a long way. 
All um, right, so we got one more verse here, babe. Why don't you go ahead and let's have that. Titus 1, nine. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So that is to convince the gainsayers. Yeah. Sometimes we're out here just arguing to argue. And I want to be right. And I want to look good because I want to be right. And that's just arrogant. You know, the point of discussing and getting in an argument, if you want to even call it that, is to come to some kind of common ground. Where, where, you know, sometimes you find out, hey, we actually do agree. But sometimes it's like, hey, I want them to convince the gainsayers. So this person, that's why I like talking to Mormons. I like talking to Jehovah yeah. Witnesses. I've never convinced one. But I want to convince them because I think they're wrong. And I think yeah. their their doctrine mm-hmm. is so wrong that I think it's it, it's going to send them to hell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I want to um, hold fast the faithful word and teach them and try to convince them. Yeah. So that's why it's important. You know, d- these discernments are very uh, – we don't have a, a recap there, Chuck, but do you remember – the, the points? Yes, I do. I actually oh, have them here. Okay. I have them on the side. Yeah. Actually, we started off kind of recapping what we did last week yep. about the uh, the what and the why, what yep. it is, why why we need discernment. But then we talked to you about the how, and uh, really it was just two points and then some some random thoughts there at the end. The first one was don't depend on others to tell you the truth. Absolutely. Right. Do, do it yourself. Do it yourself. And don't, yeah. and don't just be looking to others and following a, a, a man right. or a person. That's commentaries. That's right. uh, even your favorite YouTube guys, you yeah. know, whatever. They're good Nothing resources. Wrong with listening to them. Right. Nothing wrong with you know yeah. studying some of the things they write, but use it as a, a tool to challenge you to go back to the scripture. And the right. um, second one was just that: search the scriptures, study, yep. study. Yeah. study. That's a good word. Study. There's only twice in there, right? In the King study. James, it says study yeah. twice. Study to be quiet and study to show thyself approved. Yeah. So search the scriptures and study. And then uh, we had the discernment test in there, yep. uh, which was kind of quick and, and and short and sweet. Uh, and then some random thoughts there at the end on how to uh, how to really get down in the nitty gritty and discern because this is important, people. Yeah. This is really important, and uh, don't want to bore you too much. But um, I, I told Sarah we could do another one on this. This is so important. There's just so much to go through. Paul spent a lot of his ministry talking against the Gnostics, about the Judaizers. There's so many false doctrines that sprung up around the first century, right, yeah. right away. Yeah. yeah, I know. Isn't that amazing? So that was so important to him to uh, to attack and to correct, and, right. and he did it in love. So any last thoughts from you guys? No, well, just discernment is extremely important yep. because if you can't discern between the right and the wrong— yep. Not, you're going to be right. lost. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, you got anything? You, you, no. Okay. Sarah? <laughs> I'm going to agree with him since he was right. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're all right. Okay. So, all right. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching and if you're listening on a, a podcast, thank you for listening. Uh, check out the, the Facebook page. Uh, is it Mike Charleston Show? Uh, Facebook dot com slash Mike Charleston show. Uh, go check that out. Um, go to the YouTube channel. We're trying to get to number 200. Instagram. Uh, <laughs> yes. Instagram, which we just started. I am so old. I don't understand I some of these things, but go, please Twitter? go check it out. Did you have Twitter? We do have a website. No, we're not Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I don't know any of these. I don't but uh, we do have a website. Where MySpace. We need to. We need to. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> been dead. So, oh my goodness. Okay. Let's get out of here, Joshua. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next week. Hi, I'm Joshua Charleston, the producer for The Mike Charleston Show. If you enjoyed listening to the show, please help us spread the word by liking, subscribing, sharing, leaving a review, or just tell a friend. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to be a part of the show, please email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. We look forward to hearing from you. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Mike Charleston Show. The Mike Charleston Show.